Hello and welcome to The Green Room. I am your host, Philip Carter, and today we have author, singer, songwriter, poet, and mental health advocate, Lisa Gilliam. Stay tuned as we get ready to interview her in The Green Room. Welcome back to The Green Room, and I am here with Lisa Gilliam. Lisa, you've done so much in your life. You have so many talents, but tell us how you got started. Actually, I started uh, writing first, probably about third grade, writing and then playing the flute. I pluck a piano. Is this in elementary like, school? Elementary school, yes. Mm -hmm. So like probably like third grade, maybe third, fourth grade. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I pluck. I can't play like you, but I can pluck. I can read enough <laughs> notes to get by on like the trouble cliff line. <laughs> Were your parents musicians? They weren't, but my family does sing though. So okay. I, all my family pretty much, well, I should say my mother's side, <laughs> were singers. And my father's side, you know, my father actually, I felt like he was a walking Bible. I felt like I was destined to become a minister and kind of put the music in, into it too. But I, for most of my life, I've enjoyed, you know, singing, being able to like just make other people like forget whatever they're dealing with mm -hmm. and then take them into a different atmosphere. So singing has been a blessing too. So you started singing in church early in age? Yes, like the Trouble Clef Choir at Turn Memorial AMU the Church. The Trouble Clef Choir. The Trouble Clef Never Choir. Heard that, never heard that kind of choir before. <laughs> that was our choir at back Turner in the Memorial day. Memorial AMU yes, Church. Yes, and then I had the opportunity to work with so many different artists. At one time, Carlton Burgess was a... Uh, um, you know, a minister of music there. Yeah. At that time, it was a celestial chorale. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was the young girl in the adult choir singing with them. And so, you know, we formed a friendship and I was able to sing background and meet other, you know, artists mm -hmm. and stuff in the area. So I've been blessed to do a little bit of stuff here and there. So Carlton was there twice, actually, right? He was, yep. yeah. Because I remember going back to help him a few years ago before he moved back to back Florida. Back to Florida, I know I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> so did you sing in Complete Praise? Too? Um, I sang after Complete Praise was formed. So, mm -hmm. like, um, I used to work with the Heaven Today the Youth Choir. Like oh, yeah, volunteer. I remember that, yeah, And yeah. so I told you I did a little bit of everything. Yeah, come on now. Um, and so Carlton actually was a judge, too, and I was one of the judges, mm -hmm. and that's how we reconnected. So after that, I did go to some tours with him and then um, that's how I met Rob Mercer. I was a booking agent for him. So I've done both sides, the business side and also been out front. So it's been like, help me be well-rounded. Right. I tease I tease Rob Mercer now because you know he's, he's not a singer anymore. He's a travel agent. Right. <laughs> always gone. <laughs> always gone and always bragging about where he's going. <laughs> I saw that the other day. <laughs> Big shout out to you, Rob Mercer. <laughs> he's a great, hey, he's, he's a great guy. So you got into uh, poetry at an early age too? I did. I think writing was a way just for me to be cathartic and kind of talk. So at first it was just like the little rhyming mm -hmm. and then, you know, just to be able to get what's on my heart. Um, and so by the time I got to the point where I was ready to release a CD, I don't know if you remember Detrick Edwards, if you ever remember. Mm, no. And so he's um, a phenomenal guitarist. He's a minister now, actually, in, well, pastor in California, but he was here in this area for a while and I let him listen to some of my, my poems and he was like, you can sing, but like, this is what's going to get you there. And so, um, he put a lot of the music to my poetry, and that's how Past the Present came about. So Wow. Turner Memorial, started singing, started writing poetry. When did you write your first song? Oh, ooh, I, ooh, I don't know. I had to have been probably still like elementary school. If you ask my brother, he was like, Ma, could you please tell Lisa to shut up? Because I was always like <laughs> writing and singing, making up whatever. Like I used to act too. I was a speech and drama major in school, mm -hmm. and so... Um, you know, just I love the performance arts. I know it's ministry, but right. I love the performance arts. Right. We'll be right back with more on The Green Room with Lisa Gilliam. Welcome back. I'm here with Lisa Gilliam. We picked up with uh, talking about childhood, writing, songwriting, all those great things. Uh, you went to college? I did. I went to Virginia University. Virginia Richmond. Union? Yes. Virginia oh, yeah. A lot, of, yeah <laughs> a lot of preachers go to Virginia they Union. They did. A lot of them. And I, you know, I wasn't really called until uh, 1999. So I actually became an, a, a licensed evangelist and ordained the same year I graduated from um, the George Washington University. And that's where I got my community counseling master's mm -hmm. degree. So... 
So you licensed and ordained in the AME church? No, I did okay. not go through AME. My church at the time was non-denominational. Okay, and good. where I am now, I guess you would consider it non-denominational, baptized believers in Washington, D.C. So okay. that's been a blessing, too. So let's 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 move on up. You're you're uh, you know you've gone through many things in life. You just got out of college. Um, you know you you talked about some of your struggles in life. Um, I'll, I'll leave that to you. How you want to get started with that? But uh, for those who might be struggling, um, talk uh, tell us your testimony. Well, um, when I was younger, as a child, I was sexually abused and molested. Um, by different family members, um, two that I know of, mm. possibly more. Uh, when you've gone through that, sometimes you um, tend to forget, not necessarily on purpose, but you do. Um, and then freshman year in college, I was date raped. Um, and that was traumatic for me to have to go through the experience in a sense over again. Um, but God is so awesome because I used to do these uh, past to present conferences and I would want to share my testimony and get other people to do it. And that year, sometimes as a minister, God will give you a word where you are completely over it, you're healed, because it's to you first before you deliver it to the people. And mm -hmm. then sometimes you're still kind of going through it. And I was like, God, I want to be healed of this. I don't want this to hinder me from speaking to, to whoever you send. And I never thought I would see this guy again. And he came up to me at a game and was like, I've been looking for you for some years because I hadn't gone back to you in a while and apologize in the middle of the hmm. game for what he did to me. And I was able to share that testimony with other people who had experienced similar situations, a coworker whose um, daughter had been molested and try to um, just embark on the path of forgiveness. Like I'm really big on that. Um, and so, you know, when I think about that and just the, the deaths that I've gone through, um, last year my mom died, my father mm -hmm. died freshman year, uh, well, my senior year in well, high school, mm -hmm. uh, like a week before senior year in high school. And then I found my grandmother dead in 1995, like three days before Christmas. So I've experienced a lot of death, a lot of traumatic things. And through it all, God keeps me. It's not mm -hmm. been easy. And mm -hmm. I've cried a lot of tears. Mm -hmm. um, but I just believe that um, because of that, that, you know, caused depression at times. Mm -hmm. um, financial difficulties, just a lot of different things that happen, but you wouldn't know it by looking at me. Like, mm -hmm. God really is a keeper. I'm not just saying it. I know it, you know, for myself. And so mm -hmm. he continues to open up opportunities to be able to be a witness for him and a light for him. I believe that we should share mm -hmm. what he's done, the good news, you know, not just about who he is, but what he's done for us personally. And he's mm -hmm. doing that. And I'm really, really grateful. I hear you saying God is amazing and, and, you know, and that's wonderful. He is amazing. He can do anything. But take us back to, you know, after the abuse, after all that, how do you initially deal with something like that? Like, how did you go through that process? You know, I know that you, you, you said that the guy, he apologized mm -hmm. to you. But I mean, you know, when something like that happens, it has to be traumatic. Uh, if somebody's out there that, you know, that has experienced this, I mean, how do you deal with this initially? I think the first thing, like now, my adult self would say, get help. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to counseling then. Mm -hmm. And I did, um, you know, I had Christian friends and I was like involved in church, even at school. Um, and that's great. But mm -hmm. there, there are therapists and counselors that are trained to deal with the different types of traumas that people are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, going to a counselor definitely does help to get, you know, things off your chest. They're non um, judgmental, or at least they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, a lot of prayer for me, writing was really mm -hmm. cathartic, whether it was journaling or writing about my experiences and even speaking out. There's, you know, God can heal and he has in some areas, but there's still some things I'm realizing has triggered other things. And mm -hmm. so I'm still dealing with different aspects, you mm -hmm. know, um, in my life of things that I, I kind of want to happen. But, you know, talking about it and not holding it in. I believe that when you hold it in, that's what causes the depression uh, and that, you know, anxiety, all these other, sometimes mental mm -hmm. illnesses can happen because of trying to hold on to it and being strong and thinking that you can handle it by yourself. And right. I would not advise anybody to do that. So I hear two sides to, to treatment. I hear a practical side, going to get help. Mm -hmm. And as a Christian, I hear a spiritual side. And so often, you know, the uh, the spiritual side is emphasized and not the practical. Exactly. And, you know, the Bible says prayer and faith without works is dead. So, um, you know, we wholeheartedly are trying to encourage uh, pastors, ministers, yes. leaders in the church to embrace the idea of, sim of simultaneously as we are praying, as we are yes. working. 
Absolutely. where you know sending people to professional counselors not just Sunday school teachers yes. you know what I mean exactly. but professional counselors to help so I think that that's powerful um, you obviously have a work ahead of you in terms of uh, convincing people to think to think along yes. those lines <laughs> but I, you know I think it's just amazing your story all that you went through and what God is doing with you right now mm-hmm. and so right now you know you are a mental health advocate yes uh, your patients range from what? Um, I work with elementary right now, but I have worked with adults. Mm-hmm. Um, so pretty much every, even elderly. You're working with children? Yes. Wow. <laughs> I am. And, you know, it's really unfortunate. Like, the things that we experienced when we were children, mm-hmm. sometimes their, their experience, even in elementary, I'm with elementary and middle school, mm-hmm. um, I sometimes all I can do is pray for mm-hmm. them because sometimes they're not even able to explain or voice what it is that they're feeling. Um, but that's where drama therapy and, and, you know, play therapy and things like that also kind of comes in play. Talk to me about drama therapy and play therapy. It's basically, so play therapy is just actually using play. Um, you use sometimes dolls or different animals or, you know, puppets or whatever, just to try to get the children to be able to express it on, on their level. Um, and, and drama therapy is similar, but it's actually using acting and role playing and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, although I personally, I've taken courses and, you know, was trained through jobs with mm-hmm. it um, because I had a speech and drama background I've been able to integrate it sometimes in my counseling sessions I use music I'll use whatever I can get oh my god help me Reach so I can re- yes because you know they're hurting and then they don't perform well in school and it's not right. because they're bad or evil or you know oh they just have these diagnoses which sometimes the world will slap all this diagnose you know these diagnoses on you and it's not necessarily just that Um, But let's get past the diagnosis. They're still people. They're still human. They're still called and still have a purpose just like you and I do. And so we have to reach where they are, like meet them at their point of need as opposed to just saying, oh, they're bad. Oh, they're just disruptive. Or the world will put every child that has a problem in one category. You know, I teach school, so we used to call everybody special. Now it's, you know, challenged or, you know, it's trying to find some other word to help us to understand what's really, really going on. I think it's special that you're doing what you're doing. You, I didn't know you work with children. That is, that is, you know, because I have a special needs child at home. And so we go through a lot. He's been through counseling. And so, you know, I'm very sensitive uh, to, you know, the children with uh, any kind of uh, mental uh, uh, challenge of any kind. So I think that that's wonderful. We'll be right back with more from Lisa Gilliam. We're back on the green room and Lisa Gilliam has just shared her amazing testimony of the things that she's gone through, the things she struggled with, and about how she is now helping young people and you said adults as well, right? Yes. yes. Adults, adults. How do you I mean, how do you deal with young a young person at one point and then an adult comes in? I mean, how do you switch your mind up? I think that some of it is just the the principles are the same. Mm-hmm. Like help is help is help. You know what I mean? Gotcha. And so um, if I have to be a kid, it's almost like Paul. He said, I become mm-hmm. what? All, you know, all so things, I all be, men. Yes, so, right. you know, I, I'm a big kid at heart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if I have to, you know, I'll get on the floor with you. I'll try to bring out their creative side. Um, you know, like with my mom dying, I chose to self-disclose to all of my parents as well as the children, mm-hmm. the students, because I knew I was going to have good and bad days. Um, I don't try to do anything or teach my clients anything that I wouldn't be willing to do myself. Right. Um, and so uh, a lot of my adult work now is, you know, doing like the events I'm doing next week, which right. is a, a, a minister or pastors, mm-hmm. ministers and leaders forum where we're asking them as well as mental health professionals to come and yeah. let's have a discussion. Let's just right. talk right. about it or um, celebrate life, which is done in um, September, which is suicide right. prevention month. Um, where we have, you know, adults come in and talk about their testimonies. Like, there's a lot of shame and stigma Mm -hmm. um, associated with individuals who have depression. I've been diagnosed with depression. I've gone through, I mean, look what I went through. So why wouldn't I, you know, I don't think that I'm any better or any greater.
either, but I want people to know that regardless of if that's the case, God can still use you. Absolutely. And I'm definitely a testimony to that. And I, Absolutely. I feel like he'll continue to do so. Um, and the more that I talk about it, the more I encourage people to tell their stories. That's mm-hmm. how, you know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. So we have to stop being afraid to share what mm-hmm. it is that God has done in our mm-hmm. life. And I really wholeheartedly mean that. And we're going to dig into this event, but I want to go back. You just recently lost your mother. Yes. And, you know, and you are a mental health therapist. You know, you see, you may not have all the, you know, cum laude and everything else, but you, uh, how do you as a mental health therapist slash advocate deal with yourself when, when a tra- you know, with, with trauma hits your life, your mother who was a, a dear person in this community who I knew, you know, but how do you deal with it? Um, I got help. You went got <laughs> I help. went to grief a therapist, counseling. A therapist I did. Too. I, I have a counselor, and um, I love her. Uh, you know, she's mm-hmm. been amazing to me, Joanne. Um, mm-hmm. Listening ears, you can Google her. Um, and I also went to grief group. It's an awesome mm-hmm. um, program called GriefShare.org, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they are Christian based, which was mm-hmm. great for me. And I was able to meet other people who were going through some of the similar experiences, mm-hmm. and I could talk to them about it. Um, you know, I fight sometimes to get out the house. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's hard sometimes, just random, especially like with Mother's Day coming up and my birthday being yeah, the same week. Yeah. And this is the first, and they say mm-hmm. the first are really difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, I talk about it to mm-hmm. people who will listen. You know, mm-hmm. having a great support group definitely helps. Um, and I cry if mm-hmm. I have to cry. You know what I mean? I will say, though, this is the first time that I've lost somebody significant in my life where I was also a counselor too. Mm-hmm. So grieving while counseling others who are also sometimes grieving because mm-hmm. I have clients who have lost parents mm-hmm. during this period. Mm-hmm. It has been difficult, but I pray about it. I chose to commit to journaling like for the year and mm-hmm. just to see all the things that God has kind of done. And, um, you know, I'm trying different things. I made, you know, moves at first. I was like, well, I'm going to go out once a week. And I'm going to hang out with my friends, regardless if I feel like it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I decided to travel to Trinidad and, you know, because Mm -hmm. I could and that normally wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. I do want to say this. Sometimes in our traumatic experiences, um, not even sometimes, I still believe that God moves. Mm -hmm. And I've seen him open up doors and things that I wouldn't think that I would necessarily Mm -hmm. have or be able to experience. I would not. My job is part time. Um, I was not able to save money to go to Trinidad. It was because of my mom's death and the generosity of people giving to me and, you know, that I was able to experience a place I called it my healing vacation Mm -hmm. just to get away and try to regroup, you know. Um, And so I'm learning the importance of balancing life and work-life balance. It's so important. You know, I can't continue to just give and then not pour into me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that sometimes happens to ministers and it happens to counselors and people, you know, in this field where you're always giving and never getting. And I don't believe that that's what God wants. And so death has taught me a lot about life. Let's talk about these events that you're having. Uh, this one event you have coming up. Talk to yes. us. So the uh, Pastors, Ministers, and Leaders Forum is next Saturday, May 12th. I'm super excited. It's at 4 p.m. It's at the Millwood Church of the Nazarene, which happens to be the place where I attended my grief share group. Mm -hmm. Um, Pastor John has been awesome. And um, basically, like I said, we're just inviting people. You can RSVP on uh, Eventbrite Mm -hmm. and just look up the date or the information. Or you can um, go to Facebook.com slash Celebrate Life Alliance. And Mm -hmm. the event is right there. And basically, it's just a way, like I said, to have a discussion, to have a forum, an open discussion about what's being said, um, what's not being said. How often do you refer your, you know, congregant to a therapist or are you just kind of holding them or hoarding them Mm -hmm. to yourself, you know, thinking that you have the answers? Mm -hmm. Um, Are you willing to get training, you know, uh, to know what, what are the signs and symptoms of suicide or what if a person has schizophrenia in your congregation and has a break during the middle of service? Are you prepared to handle it? Mm-hmm. And so we want to just have conversations. So there'll be mental health professionals. Um, the the alliance itself is is a group of us who have the same type of desire to see these uh, kind of questions answered and people educated. Um, so I'm excited about that. I really am. When is it again? It's next Saturday, May 12th at 4 p.m. at uh, Melwood Church of the Nazarene. Melwood, Marlboro, Melwood Marlboro. Church of the Nazarene. You know, there's so many churches in this area. It I'm like, I never, in my head, like, <laughs> I didn't either where is that church? <laughs> Melwood, Woodyard Road. Melwood yes. Church of the Nazarene on Woodyard Road. Yes. You know what? I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I've had a few friends in my lifetime that I know have gone through some mental challenges. Mm-hmm. 
And I think that, and, and I was sitting here, I, I guess I was feeling a little guilty because I think that I don't really know how to be a friend to somebody that mm-hmm. goes through that. You know, we don't know what to say. Right. And so I think, you know, all of us need some sort of training or some, uh, you know, some, you know, if somebody passed away and the friend's like, I do know about the ministry of presence. Yes. But I'm not sure if that applies to somebody that has, you know, a mental breakdown or a series of mental problems. So I think that's very interesting what you're doing. I think it's much needed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm praying for God's favor on all of your events. I'm praying that our hearts and minds as ministers and as pastors and leaders would open up so we can have these kind of discussions and conversations. So, um, you know, May the 12th, you all be there. Join Lisa Gilliam along with others as they will be unlocking these truths about mental health and mental um, awareness. Uh, Lastly, uh, you know, there are other parts of you. There's the poet, there is the singer. Um, any future plans with uh, either one of those? Um, I was just in the studio last week, and um, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'll do background vocals. Unfortunately, I've sung in a lot of funerals lately. Mm-hmm. Um, but that okay. in that's, itself that's, has that's, been that's, a challenge, right. you know. Right. But I, um, I'm open to like every opportunity that God has. My prayers that my book will be finished this year (laughs) Um, and it's an autobiography about pretty much everything that I've uh, experienced and just you know um, I was always wondering how I was going to end it I never thought it would end Mm -hmm. or with my mom's death and Mm -hmm. just even overcoming that Mm -hmm. Um, but I understand a lot more like I said about life because of death and just Mm -hmm. cherishing Um, so I'm excited yep I'll continue to sing um, continue to preach I'm speaking uh, different places. God is really different, you know, opening the door uh, to get back because mm-hmm. I took a little break that I shouldn't have taken, but mm-hmm. I did. And, you know, I'm just thankful he's been faithful even when I wasn't. That's right. Praise so. God. <laughs> How do people reach you if they want to uh, contact you? Sure. So you can uh, find me on Reverb Nation, One Singing Lady. Everything is the number one singing lady Twitter, One Singing Lady, Instagram, One Singing Lady. Um, and then Facebook, you can find me on One Singing Lady or Celebrate Life Alliance. And uh, I decided to take a break and um, remove the uh, website until I, I'm going to do some restructuring. So probably mm-hmm. after the book is out, I'll have another website. But you can just Google me, Lisa L. Gilliam. I'm out there. Just find me. And uh, my number and everything is there. So I'm excited. And if you want to go to the uh, forum next week, mm-hmm. you can just um, find that on eventbrite.com. Lastly, any hobbies? Um Singing actually really is my hobby. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, going to movies, like plays, things like that, and just like really having time, quality time with like family and friends. That's that's what I like to do now. Sports fan? I am. I do like football. My brother used to play too. And, Who's uh, your favorite team? Uh, the Redskins. Well, we thank you right now. We just we, we praise you that Lisa yes. needs deliverance. <laughs> no. Are you a Dallas fan, Philip? That's the Lord's team. I don't understand. Oh, my goodness. Is there, is there another team? Uh, I didn't yes, know there was. Yes, the Reds here. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you so much um, for having thank me. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you for being selfless in this interview. Praise God. Thank you. Hey, and that's it for The Green Room today. We thank Lisa Gilliam for being our guest, and we hope that you will join us for the next episode of The Green Room.